evening. Welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled Fort Mitch Cantor meeting of July 8th. I'd like to just quickly mention what the school activities are not going on. And with that, I'd ask uh, everyone to turn off their cell phones as they would. And please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll move into our agenda. And first thing we will do is call the roll. Okay. President Wasserman? Here. Vice President Branstad? Here. Secretary Gorton? Not here. Treasurer Kaminsky? Here. Member Baker? Not here. Member McFarland? Also not here. Member Singer? Here. We do have a quorum. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing we'll move into is the consent agenda. Uh, it's on your agenda. I'll just quickly review them. The media, media minutes from last week, several resignations, um, recommended employment for a special ed teacher, the, some textbook approvals that we've seen before, adoption of Michigan School Code, of, uh, code articles uh, for non-resident for non-resident and resident school or non-resident school choice for joining and non-adjoining districts, um, legal invoices for payment, and that's it. Can I have a motion on the consent agenda and we'll open up for discussion for additions or variances? I move we accept consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.6. Moved, support, and supported. Any questions on any items or any additions or deletions anyone would like to speak? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of adopting the consent agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. Now we'll move into requests to address the board and we have several students here to address us. So uh, guys, what we tend to do is limit it to five minutes per person and give us your name and the school attendance area you're in. Oh, okay. Hello, my name is Jonathan Haynes. I am a junior uh, at Newman High School. My name is Alex Jewell, and I'm a senior at Newman High School. My name is Emily Fisher, and I'm a senior at Newman High School. My name is uh, Sam Robertson, and I am a senior at Midland High School. My name is Matt Pike, and I'm a senior at Midland High School. Good evening, everyone. And we come to you today as students of the district and citizens of the democracy of Midland. We see a problem with the school system. We'd like to address the problem and propose change. We believe that Midland Public Schools should not have instruction on the federal holiday of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. For those of you who do not know, the day occurs on the third Monday in January. We come in the spirit of a portion of the belief statement presented in uh, the school improvement plan. This portion states that continuous improvement requires risk taking and change. According to the U.S. Census, the minority population rose 1.4% between the years of 2000 and 2010. This provides more rationale to receive the day off. MPS has always strived to be a district that promotes diversity and positive lessons. Having Martin Luther King Day off would add to this legacy and would continue to promote the diversity that MPS set the standard for. MLK Day is not only a holiday which promotes racial equality, it is one that is meant to honor and educate on the courage, pride, and continuous no-quit attitude that Martin Luther King pioneered. With all due respect, taking a day off from kinetics and learning true lessons and importances in life by celebrating this day and honoring one of the true influences of the world wouldn't hurt anybody. In fact, it would promote what MPS is supposed to stand for. By having the day off, by not having the day off, we are wasting an opportunity to fulfill the goals of MPS, and there's no debating that. I would also like to point out that Mr. Charo mentioned diversity twice in his newsletter last year, one of which promoted the embrace of diversity and advo advocated for accepting students in MPS. To end my portion, I'll leave you with a quote from Maya Angelou, one also which Mr. Charo used in his newsletter last year. It is time for parents to teach young people early on that in diversity there is beauty and there is strength.
Middle Public Schools has never taken school off on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and we are one of the few districts in the state and in the country to not to take this day off. Martin Luther King Jr. is an American icon, and he sacrificed his life for the betterment of the country. And to this day, he is still one of the most influential leaders America has seen. We want to promote service to the community on this day rather than to just give up students another day off. Many African Americans already skipped this day and to prove a point. Ignoring the holiday only perpetuates the stereotype of a black holiday, and this is not a matter of, of black and white, but of community. To dishonor this day is to dishonor his legacy and the progress of women as well. Um, in today's day and age, it's uh, obviously very important to be aware of public perception. And uh, Midland Public Schools uh, represents the entire city of Midland. And uh, not having this day off, Martin Luther King Day, uh, undoubtedly has had a negative effect on the way people from Bay City, Saginaw, and uh, uh, neighboring counties have perceived Midland in the past. Uh, an example of this is uh, multiple uh, MH, uh, MPS employees have voiced their opinions on having uh, Martin Luther King Day off and have talked about when they talk to their colleagues uh, that work for other districts and tell them that they have to go to school on Martin Luther King Day, a lot of them are embarrassed to say that. Uh, and a lot of the people from uh, the other districts are not too surprised uh, because of Midland's perception that we may have. Uh, uh, Emily would uh, like to show you a picture uh, from the uh, Dow High School parking lot earlier this year. Uh, at first glance, you're going to say, what does this picture have to do with Martin Luther King Day? Obviously, it is a picture of the uh, multiple students outside of uh, Dow High School flying the Confederate flag. Uh, and really, it doesn't have a lot to do with Martin Luther King Day. How it has to do with is public perception and the perception that Midland continues to uh, have that uh, we are not a welcoming community to uh, not a diverse uh, community and uh, this is another example this picture uh, is just another example of something that preps uh, shows those stereotypes that uh, counties from people from other counties excuse me uh, may have about uh, the city of Midland. And as I said before, Midland Public Schools, we represent the entire city of Midland, the entire county. And it is our job to continue to uh, hold those strong values that uh, some of my fellow students talked about earlier. Um, the fact that uh, MPS ignores Martin Luther King Day as a uh, holiday, uh, just another example just like the uh, flags outside of Dow High School. And uh, I believe my hand is up. Our city claims to be the city of modern sports, yet at the same time, we cannot keep up with these modern times. We currently are in the minority, being one of the few districts in the state of Michigan that, do, that goes to school on this day, as Emily stated earlier. It would be more beneficial to honor and acknowledge this as a holiday than to ignore it. Taking this day off would not negatively impact learning or the school calendar whatsoever. This past year, we had 29 scheduled school days off, which include uh, Christmas break, spring break, as well as other PE days. And that 29, number 29 does not include the numerous amount of snow days that we had. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day is one of the three federal holidays that we do not have off, along with Columbus Day and Veterans Day. All right, so the current plan that Midland Public Schools has is to have us uh, take exams on that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the third uh, week in January. Our proposed plan would to be uh, would to have be to take that Monday off, which is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, take exams on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then take that Friday off as scheduled. And this is what Saginaw and Bay City currently do um, for their first uh, semester exams. And this is similar to what we did at the end of the year last year when we uh, went to school for one, went to the school Monday, and then we had uh, exams Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We know the schedule is currently set, 
but if we can take a few snow a uh, few snow days off and reschedule PD days and exam days during the middle of the year as we did this past year, we should be able to plan one day off months in advance. We as a community are better than this. We are one of the best districts in the country, which is proven by various publications this last year. We are a progressive community challenging the world through Dow North within our very own school district. With growing populations, it is necessary to make others feel welcome when entering the city of Lyndon. This is going, this, there will be, be the time when Martin King Jr. Day will be off for all students. So why not today for Lyndon Public Schools? If we are stopping our endeavor tonight, we are prepared to take this matter to the public eye, including various publications and social media. To simply declare the matter that to ignore this this holiday is to make a mockery of what America is supposed to stand for and makes frauds of us all. So thank you for your time tonight, and we'd like to leave you with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. himself. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle, the tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. Thank you for your time tonight. <coughs> Alex, what was your last name? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, just so you know our process, we typically would not dialogue after this. So I do want to say, A, thank you for coming. Uh, B, your articulate uh, argument was, was well, well done. Um, we do have a committee that considers calendar because they consider all sorts of stuff. Um, your proposed solution is one that I would love to have them here. Uh, just so you know, one, I don't want to call it fly in the ointment, but one of the uh, larger hurdles to get through on any calendar changes is the negotiated item. Uh, so that'll have to enter into that. So so in terms of us being able to just wave a magic wand and make it happen, it, it's not quite that simple. It's also not quite that hard. So I will ask Mr. Sherrill to make sure that the, the calendar committee addresses this as part of their next turn on the calendar. And the calendar is typically set um, for each year several years out and then the next year it's reflected upon and changed again uh, or not changed again so they'll they'll put that into their process so i just want to thank you for coming out and uh, how i appreciate being here tonight yeah and i'll, and I'll get you guys a response you know where we stand in the short period of time okay well thank you and you're welcome to stay <laughs> <laughs> you're also welcome to, you're free to leave so <laughs> i had a try <laughs> Okay, now we'll go to um, any anybody else want to address the board tonight? I'm sorry, those those are folks that requested. That said, we'll move into board of education presentations and hand it over the mic. We have uh, we want to recognize our local scholarships this year, and we had our students from Indian Public Schools earn thirteen million dollars in scholarships, and we have a number of local scholarships that are going to exist on our website, and they're going to be scrolling on the screen the following decision that board will be involved in that work is to do and so we'll recognize them that way and thank them here publicly for their uh, significant donations to our students and congratulate our students for receiving those great any questions or comments I, I just say that when we we're at graduation and uh, mrs. Kessel um, is the last graduation that I went to was mentioned all the achievements and it's just amazing how much um, they're able to um, they're generating scholarships. It's just amazing every single day. And for our volunteers and our educators, I think that's what uh, also gives me hope here that I hope you will continue to support there and uh, constant renewal of those scholarships that are available so that parents are or students are always uh, able to get the most recent information on scholarships available to their students. And, and Mike, I'd just like to applaud that we're going to publicize it more, meaning not for recognition of our students and recognition of the donors. And uh, it, it, it's, it shouldn't be a dirty little secret. It just announced a graduation, so I, I really appreciate you doing that. Well, I think it's amazing when you read the list, the number of different students that receive these. This isn't like there are just a few students who get some big full ride scholarship. There's just so many people right. in the community that have put together 
scholarships for different things that no matter what a child's interests are, there's probably something they can apply for. So it's wonderful supporting the community. Anything else? Okay, Mike, we'll move on to the MHSAA. <laughs> And we're looking for you to approve the um, Midland Public Schools joining the Michigan High School Athletic Association. And yeah, I think as most of you know, we have to do that through uh, a run-up. You had to motion for Michigan High School. It's the only option you really have out there, but you do have to join <laughs> each year. Do we have to read the resolution? You do have to read this resolution by their bylaw. So I'll take a motion for the resolution, then we'll read it. Okay, I'm just still here. Move approval of agenda item 5.1 uh, relating to the MHSAA. Moved and Support. supported. And we'll move into the reading of the resolution, then we'll have discussion and a vote. Okay. So the uh, this is membership resolution for the year August 1st, 2014 through July 31, 2015. And the secondary schools, which are under the direction of this Board of Education slash governing body, are Herbert Henry Bell High, Midland High, Jefferson Middle School, and Northeast Middle School. Um, schools in the City of Midland, County of Midland. They are hereby enrolled as members of the Michigan High School Athletic Association, Inc., a nonprofit association, and are further enrolled to participate in the approved inter-school athletic activities sponsored by said association. The Board of Education slash governing body hereby delegates to the superintendent or his designee the responsibility for the supervision and control of said activities and hereby accepts the constitution and bylaws of said association and adopts as its own the rules, regulations, and interpretations as minimum standards as published in the current handbook as the governing code under which the said schools shall conduct its program of interscholastic athletics and agrees to primary enforcement of said rules, regulations, interpretations, and qualifications. In addition, it is hereby agreed that schools which host or participate in the association community and tournaments shall follow and enforce all tournament policies, procedures, and schedules. This authorization shall be effective from August 1, 2014, and shall remain effective until July 31, 2015, during which the authorization may not be revoked. Um, the above resolution was adopted by the Board of Education, okay, education slash governing body of the Midland Public Schools on the 14th day of July, 2014. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? I'll just add a quick point that Mike may have been making. I hope I'm not preempting him. This is uh, required that A, we abide by the rules and bylaws by accepting this, and B, it's our only way you get to participate in a statewide event, and oftentimes the only way you get to compete against other member institutions. Uh, so we want to provide students to compete in the Saginaw Valley and state tournaments. We need to do what's going to do to do what they asked us to do. There, there are some good things that there's updates constantly there, how they handle concussions, how yes. they deal with injuries, and, and also protection of athletes. Yes. So I know that, that it, it seems a lot of verbiage, a lot to read, but there's a lot of really good thought that goes into keeping us to a standard and uh, level of education. Yes. As a former football official, the annual meetings of every sport are highlighting safety issues and areas of concern uh, and training for coaches, et cetera, it's wonderful. Can I clarify something on the motion? Um, the um, the motion that we have is for the MHS a membership resolution and was was read by Yvonne. Okay, correct. So that's the motion at hand. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Mm -hmm. The ayes have it. Oh, I did. John and Pam. I saw you moving. I thought I'd repeat it, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, now we're going to move into preschool compensation. And for those who have read the agenda where it says preschool workers' compensation, don't associate workers and compensation together in terms of a benefit. It's <laughs> preschool <laughs> workers, compensation of preschool workers. There you go. <laughs> Good point. Um, so we're asking for a motion for approval of the addendum to the salary letter that you had approved earlier. Since then, we finalized the... Uh, new preschool program and the employee and due to the assignment and the duties that she has to carry out um, we have to make some adjustments to that salary and compensation and you have that in place. Can I have a motion for that, that uh, salary schedule? I move we approve item 5.2 which is the 2014-15 salary letter addendum. And I'll second that. We will 
support the camp. Um, any questions or discussion? Just a quick clarification. With the, with the preschool workers, this is bringing money into the district, although we have more tuition-based preschool programs that'll be aligned with the IBPYP program, uh, which means we're fully certified at the PYP level. It, it'll be certified as well. And um, so with that tuition base, our hope is to break even. Um, you know, you mm -hmm. leave yourself a little bit of a buffer. And so uh, Mr. Bleacher and, and um, the Lord Lake Strip and um, Luann the teacher have been work quickly and on this project. As you know, we've done this rather quickly and we're ready to go at this point with the uh, teacher leader on hand. Um, and there's an assistant that will also be hired to see in that phase so mm -hmm. at some point but the teacher leader is the key to get her up and going and we're ready and rolling with i think the rooms are uh, met most of the, the uh, certifications at this point so we're feeling really good about our site i sense a lot of growth with that program yeah, really exciting really yeah. exciting any others well none all, all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed mm -hmm. the ayes have it we have uh Mike again. In the old yeah, it's going to be Mike and Brian as Gary and Bob are gone for the yeah. tonight, so you'll hear us constantly. Um, the Ola Board Policy Manual, as we adopted that in its entirety, and there's some three minor tweaks to uh, three policies 2430, 2431, and 8210. Um, one is simply on uh, drug testing, which the Ola had inserted. We do not do that at all, and so that's being removed. And the second one is our overnight strip you know how quick that occurs with teens qualifying for playoffs mm -hmm. and language had um, that being approved by you you're gonna but now make that um, will it be for me to approve that uh, on for you at that time and you're going school center yeah thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was missing on the third one so <laughs> you're, I was just lucky because that's the one I opened okay <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll accept the motion and second then we can have a discussion and questions Motion to accept the 5.3 mil uh, update. Is that support? Support. I have a motion to support. Uh, questions or comments on the three different policy edits? I personally am very comfortable, um, but the, the drug testing one, I'm very comfortable with that disappearing. I'm also very comfortable with giving you authorization for the board to support the trips to yep. as you s use your judgment. And, and I'll and notify you through the Friday letter when sure, that's occurring. Sure, sure. And uh, lastly, the, the calendar where we've added language about the, the official holidays and when we, how this whole calendar thing works a little bit as per tonight's discussion, oh, which is extremely <laughs> timely. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay, um, any others? Seeing no move in the vote. All in favor of supporting the three uh, NEOLA policy changes, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, now we're gonna move, I can quickly move back to my screen. I don't know how to go back there. It's the delegate for you. Yeah. Go the other way. I tried that. <laughs> oh well, I, I apologize. I got it. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're moving on to the adoption of Michigan Schools Code. Oh no. I'm Proposed sorry, Michigan Association School Board Delegate. 5.3. Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. oh, oh yes, there it is. Please have it again. I apologize. Do you want to this is, some, uh, I'll bring this one up, I guess, Mike. Okay. Um, this is a duty of the president of the board to uh, nominate delegates and alternate delegates to the Michigan Station School Board meetings or conferences they may have. In the in last year, um, I'd ask Dr. Kaminsky to be that delegate and for Lynn to be the alternate. I have not contacted each of you as I, as I would have in the past on this one, frankly. And I'm willing to ask if anyone is interested first to be the delegate. Um, there are, the meeting last year was in Grand Rapids. I think it's in Grand Rapids again this year. I'm not certain. Um, it's not mandatory attend, but oftentimes this year, particularly if there's school finance things that are pertinent, we will want somebody to attend. If you cannot attend as the delegate, we can always uh, send the alternate or we can send somebody else. It's not that rigid. They just don't want somebody who's unauthorized by a school board to show up in a meeting speaking for a school board. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. So the wave of a baton, we can do a quick vote and change the person who does. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. So if, if, if John would be willing to be the delegate and I put it in, if you really would prefer not and someone else would like to volunteer, I'll put your name in and we can do a vote from there. 
So I'm, I'm comfortable going forward and having myself available. Okay, and Lynn's um, not here to be the alternate. Anybody else want to volunteer to be sure, alternate? Sure, I'll be alternate and if you're looking for one. That's fine. So we'll, all we've got is John is delegate and Pam is alternate. Is she in democracy in action here? <laughs> 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 no, no, sure. no smoked rooms here. Um, late October, yeah. oh. I believe. Um, John might have went last year. Somebody went. Yeah. And uh, I've gone to the one before was in, in Traverse City, but yeah, she only offered twice. Yeah. I thought one year was in the Detroit area. Yeah, they the move around. Yep. Yep. So Is it a Wednesday thing, thing, a weekend thing? It's usually like a Friday, Saturday, it's and Sunday thing. Yeah, it's right. they so used minimal to time off of work. And Pam, yeah. you know, I probably should have nominated you to be the, the member. Um, being the newest board member with the least certifications because often at these conferences, you can do cram courses towards your school board certification also. Okay. Excellent. And you can okay. get them all done and yeah. they'll do like the mornings for classes and the afternoons for sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you can talk John out of going when the time comes, if, if only maybe get a lot of those done. So um, anyway, any others? All in favor of our name delegate and alternate say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> you guys have it. Congratulations. And of course, if you can't, just let me know and we'll do what we got to do. Now we'll move to the hold harmless millage and non-homestead millage ballot language. So it's that time to place it back on the ballot. Um, and we've decided that November would be the good time to do that. One being that uh, most election costs are covered already. And um, if we did do something in February, you'd usually have two different things and get them mixed up in what right. they're doing. And so this is um, a given. Uh, I, hate, I hate to use that word, but it should be a given to the voters. This is allows us to get our full student foundation allowance. So without passing these, instead of the full foundation allowance, we would that amount would be deducted by that dollar amount. And in our case, it's significant because of our industrial properties mm -hmm. being in such a large amount. And so um, you've done that once every 10 years. And so we will do some educating. Don't run a campaign, but we'll educate people because it should be um, common sense to approve this or you know, people won't dollar amount. Our proposal that it allows you to keep the full dollar amount. And, and Mike, are we voting on the language tonight, or are we voting to put it on the ballot? Tonight? We are voting to put it on the ballot, but the, the language is there for you to do vote. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we need to read the lo language to vote you to do put it on the ballot? And w does this require a re roll call vote? I'll no, do it just, do I'll do it to, be just case. to be case. Okay. Everybody's had a chance to, to read this. This is our mm -hmm. Hold Harmless Millage. Um, Everybody's well in this table is well aware of what that is. We'll have to educate the community a little more what it is. Um, I think it helps differentiate us from other districts. A small amount, but we say small, it's a significant amount. And so they don't want to lose. And it. it's both hold harmless and 18 mil. And 18 mil for the renewal. The full renewal. And the consequences for the public of not renewal is while we say the state mm -hmm. basically decides what we spend, they decide the total, subtract what you locally contribute, and then give you the difference. If we choose not to locally contribute, they don't make that up. It's just the difference that would have been. And that would be devastating if it was, you know, just wipe out 90%, 80% of our of our budget. So with that said, um, I'll take I'll take a motion in a second on the language to be put on the November and the uh, acceptance to put this on the November ballot. I move to for five uh, Agenda item 5.5, the hold harmless millage and non-homestead millage ballot language be put on um, the next ballot. November general election. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Support. Support. That. Support. So the motion for the November general election and language, and Cindy, you can decide who supported fast enough. <laughs> 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 um, with that, any more questions or comments? No, just to reiterate, this is a renewal. This is not an increase. This is just a renewal. Yep. Okay. And, and, and I would just like to say, Jerry says a lot. Thank you for the voters. You know, we we do not take for granted any support, and Absolutely. we we we're glad we're entrusted with the ability to uh, conduct these um, operations, and I think it's very worthy. In fact, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong. The hold harmless millage is unique. And that it is not a constant millage; Correct. it's a authorized millage to collect a certain number of dollars. Mm -hmm. And when property rates go up, we decrease 
the millage from the authorized level to make the dollars work out. So in reality, taxpayers have been paying ever decreasing millages and constant taxes over the 10 years for the whole harmless portion. Correct. And yeah, we vote on that, I think, in November or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, as part of this. So I just want to make clear on that, that it's as property values go up, that one component does not go up in terms of dollars out of the taxpayer's pocket. Okay, that said, let's do a roll call vote. I got to meet the secretary to go to the roll call. Oh, okay. <laughs> President Wasserman? Yes. Vice President Branstad? Yes. Secretary Gorton? Yes. President Kaminsky? Yes. yes. Member Baker? Here. Member McFarland is not here. Member Singer? Yes. We have 5 0 with a, with a quorum. So be on the ballot. And thank you, taxpayers, for your support. Move to finance. Um, John, do we have a finance committee report? We do not, not have a committee report, okay. but we do have some gifts. And yeah. and Brian's prepared to fill yeah. in for Mr. Cooper. Yeah. $5,700 from the Dow Chemical Foundation, a gift to the Midland High Marching Band for $250. The generosity of the Jefferson Middle School PTO, two separate gifts, one for approximately $404 for physical education equipment, one for $295.52 for seventh grade books. And then a series of gifts totaling $5,000 from the Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund based at the Midland, the Midland Area Community Foundation in $1,000 increments went to the Midland High School JV softball field equipment, another $1,000 to the Midland High School varsity softball for field equipment, and $1,000 to the Midland High School girls basketball team. At HH Dow, I, they received a grant for $1,000 for freshman JV baseball, and also $1,000 for varsity baseball as well. And then for action this evening, we bring to you from the generosity of the Plymouth Elementary PTO, for supplies, subscriptions, and field trips, a gift totaling $17,955. Wow to all of it, <coughs> especially to the last one. Um, first, thank you, but then first I'll also accept a motion for 6.2. I move we accept item 6.2. Support. <laughs> we have a motion in support. Any questions or comments? First of all, I had to read that twice when I was reading it before because <laughs> that <laughs> That is a very generous gift. And then I also want to think, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund the one where the students do something and then they in volunteer. return? They volunteer. I really like that fund. Yeah, I think that that nice. is a really neat um, way to do donate. I donate my time and I get something in return. It's a great lesson for kids. Any other comments? I know when I read the agenda the other night, I go, but Plymouth is my wife's alma mater. <laughs> and so I went, Sally, your alma mater is $18,000. <laughs> so I was taken aback. So thank you to all the parents out there. Okay, that said, we'll move into vote. All in favor of accepting uh, that large gift and thanking all the others, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes unanimously have it. Move to HR. Who thinks going to do that again? On behalf of Midland Public Schools, we would like to extend our deepest sympathy for the two memorials this evening. Uh, the first to Betty Westover's family. She passed away on June 20th, 2014. Ms. Westover was an elementary teacher with the Midland Public Schools for more than 28 years. She served at East Lawn, State Street, Cook, and Chestnut Hill. She began her MPS career in 1957 and retired in 1985. The second memorial is for Matilda Stelmacher, who passed away on June 28th past year. Ms. Stelmacher was part of the food service staff at Dow High for 20 years and she retired in 1981. Rest in peace to the family. Uh, moving on the agenda, there's a list of letters to and from the Board of Education, a list of our future, our future meetings as currently scheduled, and uh, now we move into study discussion and sessions, and I'll move to Angela first. All right, not a lot. Just once again, overwhelmed by um, the generosity donating and it was great tonight to highlight um, scholarships appreciate that and I also really appreciate the Midland High students who came tonight and spoke I like it when kids get involved and thinkers in the stuff we do and it's not just parents standing up there but kids actually take a real interest in what goes on so I want to thank them for coming tonight uh, the 
first thing I'm thinking about is Midland's uh, initiative to explore Midland's future and Midland Public Schools as being a part of that and how I look forward to this um, planning process with the community as in hand in hand with the planning of Midland Public Schools and what, what we're going to do in the next five and ten years and just uh, working with Mr. Carroll and, and um, making plans to make sure we are strong and able and ready to move forward. I just want to say that I hope everybody's enjoying their summer, enjoying the nice weather. I hope everybody remembers to read a few books every few days and do a few math problems every single day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I really don't have anything to add uh, just thank you to the donors because it's really nice even though the school's not in session to see that those donations are coming in and uh, I'm really impressed with um, with the support of the community every board meeting it's amazing I repeat almost what everybody else said so I won't but I really want to appreciate the students come out and speaking their mind in a, and, and, and a very articulate and uh, logical manner appreciate their arguments as they go forward and um, that's all I have for tonight so I think we have a ch chance to educate our students even further they did a great job tonight I think um, I'm trying to think about how we handle this thing going forward and you know maybe we can uh, bring some of them in and have mm -hmm. a discussion just on the process and how it comes and um, you know they did a nice job but there were some things in there maybe not completely accurate that I think we have to take a look at and you know I would say the majority of schools still don't think Martin Luther King was off in their day. Not that we shouldn't that we understand. Uh, I think we should take a look at that, but I think that statement was probably inaccurate. And it would be a great chance to work with them. And I, I think they have a good point, and they want to make a good point, and they've done a good job and help them from uh, maybe going the wrong way with their message. Um, you know, if you heard part of it in there, it was a little bit of almost if you don't do this, you know, and then we have to educate them how the democratic process works. And how school boards and school systems work and school boards are huge. So I think it's a good, good chance to educate them as well. Um, facility studies update. Um, so we, the construction manager and architect have been through all of our facilities at this point. They're working now behind the scenes quickly to come up with uh, needs, wants, the difference of those, um, where we stand on all of our facilities as far as open and closed facilities. And they're gonna make an initial recommendation to us at your August board meeting. Um, we've already been beginning to set up what we're calling community meetings, so three meetings with hopefully representative groups of our community to take that data, that information they provided to us and have a discussion on um, how they feel about that and what might they support or what might they not support as they try to put a plan to go forward about our facilities. Today in uh, the Monday communique, so we had put together last week for another purpose, um, a little fact sheet um, about our buildings and it was kind of stunning for me to take a look at it I guess maybe we're still being fairly new here um, most of you know that but I think even those of you who know that when you look at that sheet um, the average age of our buildings being 61 or 62 years old I believe um, across and then the amount of square footage that you're maintaining and trying to handle um, out there is, is significant and so um, I think that's some of the things we're trying to reach out and figure out what to do, how we can decrease some of that square footage, how can we become more efficient, how do we ma maintain buildings that are average age 61 years old going forward. So um, I'm excited about it, but nervous about it at the same time. I'm sure you are too. It, it, it needs to be done, and it will be what it's going to be. And the question is, can we come up with a creative solution to whatever the is is? Yeah. So. Well, and I think people have been questioning that for so long. Exactly. You know. Long-term facility on, plan. I think people yeah. have kept questioning every time they've done something. You right. know, what's so on the plan? And until you do what they're doing right now, it's hard to do a long-term plan. You yeah. got to see where you're at to really figure out where to go. Yeah, and, and I think that's the key point that we're, 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 we're making a commitment to them. This is our plan for 10, 15 years out. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think they want to hear that, despite it may not be as good of news as we'd all like it to be. And the last piece on that, as well as um, the consultants working with us, have provided um, some software. We just got a chance to look at it today, and I think um, last week we talked about communication and how we communicate quite well one way, um, but now it needs to be increased to two-way communication. And so this is an attempt to do that. The software is called Talk to Us, and we will listen. And so um, right now, 
we're doing the talking. We're not getting a lot of input back. And so trying to get that input back. So we'll see where that goes. I've si seen the first view of it today, and um, it looks initially looks good. And so we'll see where it goes from there. And that is all I have for tonight. Anything by anybody else? I, I just have one thing. Um, we're using for for our board meetings with board members. We're using maybe a different way to communicate. On that note, um, anybody want to mention something about that? I yeah, uh, I can do that. Yep. So our first board meeting was some uh, software tool called Boardbook, and um, we will be going paperless, moving the right movement to go forward. And so you probably saw some board members struggle tonight <laughs> moving through their <laughs> devices. Um, and so it's the first time we've been inside that. Um, there's some nice pieces of that besides the paperless part of it. Um, one will certainly be for you, where it's all archived in one place to review any time at, at any point and go back and look at, um, as well as the minutes. And it, the other side is for Cindy, who does all the preparation for you on the agenda going forward. As we ask our employees to wear more hats and do more things, um, it's important that we learn how to become more efficient. And this is a tool, potentially, we hope, that will make, it, make Cindy more efficient. As you know, since at least I've been here, I've doubled her duties as far as the communique and the newsletter and all the pieces that she helps me with. And so um, if we can take, make this little job a little easy on this end, um, in order to continue to do those other pieces. I think it's important that we attempt to do that. And I agree. I just think it's neat that there's we get a board packet as board members, and if we want to reference something, we have it here, because I don't bring all my papers with me. It really is nice <coughs> to have it all in one spot in case we want to reference something that we did a few months ago. Agreed. Very nice. Yep. And not yeah. distracting. Mm -hmm. In the past, we tried this seven, eight years ago. And it was really just PDFs of all the documents, and everybody had their big laptops mm -hmm. and big laptop yeah. screens, and it was glued to the big screen. It just looked a lot better than, than with the pads. Okay, with that, we stand adjourned.